Well, happy Monday, everybody. Great to be with you. Um, you know, two weeks ago, I took a break for Mother's Day, but two weeks ago, I started a series on what I call one anothering, about how we interact as a community of faith. We saw in um, 1 John 1, 5 through 7, John says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So our sense of family in the church, our sense of community in the church, cannot come from any other factor except our oneness in Christ that we are one with others who have seen and received the light of Jesus Christ. We have fellowship with all who have allowed that light into their lives. Anyone from any place, any time, any culture, any family can be part of the family of God. It's not exclusive. It doesn't leave anyone out. Now today, let's look at Paul's words in Galatians 5.13. He says, you, my brothers, were called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another. What does it mean to serve one another? Well, I think if we understand it right, it means giving up your right to be served for the purpose of giving that service to someone else. Jesus had the right to expect to be served. He had every right to expect that others would serve him. But instead, what did he do? He humbled himself and he served others. He washed his disciples' feet. Paul says in Philippians 2, 3, and 4, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking out for your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. You know, I heard a... a an interesting thought the other day where someone said humility is not thinking less of yourself it's thinking more of others it's not putting yourself down it's lifting others up sometimes we can be so filled with a sense of our own importance that we convince ourselves that others don't deserve our service or that we need to be served before them Jesus served all kinds of people. He served people with disgusting illnesses that you didn't even want to touch them. He served a woman who was caught in sin right in the act of adultery and about to be stoned. He served a man named Zacchaeus who everyone hated and everyone thought was a great sinner. He served people who it didn't seem like they deserved to have someone serve them, especially someone of Jesus' stature. You know, I would go as far as to say Jesus was the original creator of the pay it forward movement. You know, you hear this pay it forward, do something good and then I don't expect anything in return from you, you just pay it forward to someone else. Well, you know, Jesus says, remember what I have done for you. Consider what I have done for you and how much you have received from me, how much you have been forgiven and then pay me back by paying it forward to someone else. When we do that, everyone will serve and everyone will be served. So it's a beautiful circle. If we all do it, everyone will have the opportunity to serve others. And in the process, you will be served too. Everyone will be served together. That's the way community is meant to work. But the problem is that no one wants to be the first to put themselves out on the line like that. No one wants to be the first one. We always have our eyes on the others and think, what if I serve them, but then nobody's there for me? What if I put myself out there and then I'm left out there hanging in the wind? But our eyes should be on Jesus, not on others. Our eyes should be on Christ. If we do it for Christ, nothing can steal our joy. Nothing can take it away from us. We won't be concerned about being served because we will be mindful of the fact that we have already been served to the fullest that we ever could be through Christ's forgiveness and grace. Remember that this whole passage started with the idea that we are free in Christ. You, my brothers, were called to be free. No one is forcing us to serve others. Jesus is not putting a gun to ourselves and saying, you have to go serve other people. He has freed us so that we don't have to be in bondage to someone who is putting a gun to our head, to the evil one. He has freed us so that we can have the joy and the freedom to do this on our own in thanks to him. And if we do it out of duty, we are living under the same bondage that he freed us from and we are living without joy. So if we walk in the light, 
as he is in the light. We will be in fellowship with one another. We will be one family together, not exclusives, all of us together. And it will feel like a privilege. It will feel like a joy to serve others, to wash each other's feet, to do things for others. And then as God's missional family, we will be bound together in love and in the spirit that in that spirit, God will use us in amazing ways for the glory of the Father. Let's think about that today. I think the more we can think about and dwell on what God has done for us in Jesus and how he wants us to pay that forward, that will be a blessing for us on this beautiful day. God bless you. See you next week.